Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, why are carbon prices back in the news? Now, the only way it does seem to be up at the moment. So, a few people have picked up on this. Prices for EU carbon allowances, as they're known, that's like a proxy for the carbon price, you want to see it that way, are up fourfold in 15 months to 18 euros per tonne. And that is, as I stand here, early October 2018. Now, think tank Carbon Tracker says they could double to 40 euros per tonne over five years. We need to look at why in just a moment, so that's a pretty dramatic change. And depending on who you read, Berenberg Bank see prices rising to a possible 100 euros per tonne as early as 2020. And if that happens, it would have some quite significant ramifications for consumers, companies, and so on. So, what's going on? Now, the political backdrop is this. Carbon prices went a bit quiet for a long time, and I'll cover why in just a moment, but the political backdrop is this, and this is not a political video. It doesn't really matter whether you agree with what's on these slides. What I'm about to describe in terms of the carbon trading scheme is happening anyway, so it's kind of academic. But the background is this. Carbon emissions are cited as a key contributor to climate change. That's the bit you do or don't have to agree with, but that's not the point. That won't affect potentially the direction of carbon prices over the next few years. Critics want to see emissions reduced globally, and the EU ETS whatever that is, is a key mechanism in this process. I'm going to focus on what the EU is up to, because the EU have stolen a march in this area and are sort of being copied. Their scheme is seen as a sort of standard, if you like, for other schemes around the world. So, what is this thing, the EU ETS? Well, to give it its proper title, it's the EU's Emissions Trading Scheme, which was actually launched way back in 2005. So if you're thinking, why haven't I heard much about it recently, I'll cover that in just a moment. You'll certainly be hearing about more about it in the next few years if the carbon price keeps rising. Created the world's first major market in uh, these things called allowances, which I'll cover in a moment, covering over 75% of global carbon trading. So it's big, both in absolute and relative size terms. And it aims to reduce carbon emissions across the EU by 40%, resizable by 2030. So, let's take a look at it. It operates in 31 countries across the European economic area, including the UK. So it's a big scheme. It limits emissions from over 11,000 energy-intensive installations. All right. So an energy-intensive installation, obvious example, we have a power station, but other companies and organisations are included within the definition. And it covers nearly half of the EU's greenhouse gas emissions in total. So it's important. So any changes to this scheme have a ripple effect across the entire market. Now, volume of gas emissions by installations, given power plants as the main example, are subject to a reducing EU cap. So what the EU are doing is basically saying every year we want to bring down the total volume of emissions. Firms receive or buy emission allowances to cover their emissions. So the way this works is as, as a firm you need to kind of get yourself to what might be called emissions neutrality, at least, which is a position where you've got these allowances, whatever they are, to cover your emissions. And some firms will have more allowances than emissions, Others will be the other way around. The question then arises, if you have a deficit, how do you solve it? All right? And these can be bought and sold like a commodity. So there's a clue as to what the answer is going to be. If you don't have enough allowances to cover your emissions, okay, well, what do you do about it? One option is simply to buy some more. Another option is to change the way you operate. And that's ultimately what the EU hope to achieve with this exercise. So what is an allowance, first of all? Uh, access to the kind of currency of the ETS, if you like. Um, and the total number is limited and usable once only. So there's a ceiling on the number of these things in existence at any one point in time, if you like. Each gives the holder the right to emit one tonne of CO2 or the equivalent. So that's saying, right, you can emit one tonne of CO2 or the equivalent. If basically a firm can't cover its emissions, its annual emissions, with the right number of allowances, it's fined and named and shamed. So those are the two sort of weapons the EU has up its sleeve to deal with non-compliant firms. So there's an incentive to basically try and make sure you're covering your emissions with allowances. Or, if you're really struggling to do that, obviously what they're hoping you'll do is change the way you operate and become more emissions efficient. Or even, in an extreme case, go out of business. Now, where do firms get these allowances from? So you're thinking, well, I am uh, you know, an emitting firm, a polluter, if you like. How am I going to do this? Well, the government give a certain number of free allowances. There are auctions, competitive auctions, where firms can get hold of these things. They can use unused allowances from previous years. So it is a kind of, you can store unused allowances. You only use them once, but you don't have to use them. It's not like an ISA allowance, use it or lose it in the same tax year. You can roll forward allowances from previous years, or you can buy them in the carbon market. So there are quite a number of sources of these allowances. Now, the need to purchase or draw on their reserves of allowances and credits 
creates a permanent incentive for the companies to reduce their emissions. This is the theory. This is what they're hoping will happen according to the EU ETS fact sheet. Now, who sells them? So let's say you've got a shortfall. Where are you going to get allowances from? Well, a firm that has more allowances than it needs can sell them. Now, how will that happen? Well, maybe it has got more efficient and suddenly it finds itself in a position where it's got surplus allowances. Um, so this is designed to incentivize a shift to low carbon sources and carbon efficient technology. So the idea is that as these allowances get more and more expensive, firms will think, oh, crikey, it's going to be really expensive to cover my emissions by buying allowances. Maybe we need to change the way we do business. It's the ultimate idea. And the price is set by supply and demand. So it is an open market price, but the ETS acts as a kind of central bank now with some control, or will be soon, with some control over the number of these things around in the market. Now, in summary, therefore, let's say firm A has allowances for 40 tonnes and emits only 20. All right, well, that's a happy position to be in. It could keep those spare allowances. because It might be thinking, well, next year we're going to need them. Or it could sell them to another firm that needs them to make up a deficit. So that's the idea. Basically, firms that have surplus allowances and countries that have surplus allowances can sell them to firm stroke countries that need them to cover their emissions. Now, why do carbon prices collapse? Why am I talking about this now? Why was I talking about it a few years ago? Well, basically, um, the financial crisis 2009, and we're 10 years on from that now, pretty much, created a massive oversupply of allowances, which meant the price collapse. So to give you an example, 1.7 billion tonnes of EUAs versus emissions of 1.75 billion tonnes. So suddenly there was no real demand for allowances and in any market if that happens the price will collapse, especially if there's no central mechanism to absorb surplus allowances. And that's what happened. So basically they're back in the news now off a low base following a price collapse. So the latest solution, what, what is prompting these price rises is the creation of an EU market stability reserve, penciled in for January 2019. And the price has risen almost in anticipation of this, if you like. This is going to be a central bank for carbon, as I've seen it put before, that can gradually remove surplus allowances. And that's important because it aims to solve the problem of a fixed supply and variable demand. In other words, it creates demand, takes some of these allowances, if you like, out of the private market, and that is going to move the price up. And that seems to be exactly what's happening. So the startup, the MSR, will create the biggest supply squeeze the EU ETS has ever seen says Mark Lewis of Carbon Tracker. So in anticipation of this happening, firms I think have got a problem with buying ahead. In fact, countries, in some cases, have been thinking about buying allowances ahead. So closing thoughts, <coughs> bringing this back to sort of consumers and investors, if you like. Allowances are a volatile hybrid investment best left to professionals. That's just to stop anyone out there thinking, oh, I'd like to get myself into these carbon allowances things. Um, no, probably not a good idea. They're a little bit technical, they're a little bit hybrid, they're quite difficult to get hold of. There are hedge funds that buy them, but let's leave that to them. <coughs> Rising carbon prices will push up energy prices. If you're thinking this is academic, why do I care about the price of something created by the EU in this funny scheme? Well, it's because ultimately, if these price rises for carbon allowances keep going, you will find that certain things get more expensive. Now, the EU would say that's a fair price to pay for reducing the overall level of emissions, greenhouse gases and so on, but that is the deal, essentially. And Schroeder's estimate that 50% of the list of global firms would be impacted to the price it's 100 euro. Now, we don't know whether that's going to happen, but you can see a significant price right up to, up to the kind of Berenberg level. We're way off that yet. We're around about 18 euros at the moment. Would have potentially a massive impact because so many firms are linked in some way to the carbon price, directly or indirectly. So there you have it, editor at kidic.com. Big topic if you'd like to see some of those fact sheets I mentioned and ping me there. And to watch other videos on other financial markets topics, it's kidic.com forward slash learn 